today's uh, session's keynote speaker, Professor Celia Shahnaz. She will be presenting a keynote before the audience in today's international conference on science and contemporary technologies, ICSC, ICSCT 2021. Our research topic is uh, our title is uh, 2D biosignal processing for automation in disease detection based on the neural networks. But before we start of our session, I would like to introduce a brief biography of her. Uh, Professor Celia Shahnaz, she's a, she's a senior member of IEEE, fellow of the Institution of Engineers Bangladesh, and she received PhD degree from Concordia University, Canada, and currently she is a professor of the Department of Tripoli Buet, Bangladesh, since 2015. She has published more than 150 international journal or conference papers. She is a recipient of the Canadian Commonwealth Scholarship or Fellowship and Bangladesh Academy of Science gold medal for her contribution in science and technology. Her research interest include the areas of signal processing for speech analysis and speech enhancement, audiovisual recognition for biometric security, control systems, robotics, pattern recognition, machine learning, deep learning for audio, video, biomedical, power signals, multimodal emotion recognition, and humanitarian technology. Recently, her papers have received best paper awards in IEEE BasicCon in 2019. And biomedical engineering tracks at TenCon in 2017, and at IEEE YCON ECE in 2016 in humanitarian technology track at R10 HTC conference in 2017, and the best interactive poster award at ICI BPR in 2017. Our paper was selected for the top. 10 best paper awards in the student paper contest of the 2018 and 2014 IEEE International Midwest Symposium on Circuits and Systems, College Station, New York, uh, Texas, USA, and Texas, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, USA, respectively. She was the winner of the best student paper award of 2018 IEEE International Conference on Neural Network and Signal Processing in China. She was selected as one of the finalists of the student research presentation competition in the, in the 2009 CETACOM workshop in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. She has more than 20 years of experience as IEEE volunteer in leading impactful technical, professional, educational, industrial, women empowerment, and humanitarian technology power and energy related projects at national and international levels. She has, she was the mentor of the first uh, or second prize winning projects in IEEE IAS CMD contest on robotics humanitarian in 2017-19 USA. She was the superior supervisor of the fourth and fifth rank winning teams in SP Cup competitions, ICA SSP in 2020 in Spain, and in 2015 in Australia, and fifth rank winning team in VIP Cup competition, ICIP in 2020 in United Arab Emirates. She is the recipient of the 2021 Inspiring Women in Academia Award from Bangladesh Brand Forum, 2010 Art Humanitarian Activities Outstanding Volunteer Award in 2016, MJ Leadership Award, 2015 WIE Inspiring Member Award, 2013 R10 WIE Professional Volunteer Award. She has been appointed as 2021 to 23 chair of IEEE SPS Women in Signal Processing, 2021 to 23 liaison between IEEE SPS and IEEE WIE. She has been appointed as 2021 to 22 member IEEE History Committee, liaison between IEEE History Committee and IEEE WIE, 2021 CR IEEE WIE History Subcommittee, and 2021 member IEEE Educational Activities Board and Faculty Resources Committee. She is the 2021 member IEEE 
WI senior member elevation drive 2019-2021 member IEEE WIE We Power Subcommittee 2020 to 2021 member IEEE Smart Village South Asian Working Group 2017 to 21 IEEE Face Women in Power IEEE Art uh, and Representatives. She was a candidate for the 2021 IEEE Art and Director elect election. 2020 member IEEE New Initiative Committee, 2020 Chair IEEE Insight Working Group, 2017, 2019 Communications Chair IEEE Site Steering Committee, 2017-18 Chair IEEE WI Workshop Subcommittee, 2017-18 member IEEE Art and Subcommittees, WIE Humanitarian Technology Activity and Education, 2016 IEEE Art and WIE Coordinator. She has served as the chair of IEEE Bangladesh section in 2018 to 2021. 20, uh, she is the founder and chair of IEEE SPS IAS Bangladesh chapters, co-founder of vice and vice chair IEEE RAS SSIT Bangladesh chapters, founder and advisor WIE Affinity Group IEEE Bangladesh section. She has served as the general chair IEEE TENSIM 2020 IEEE SpeaksCon 2019, IEEE PRCon 2019, General Chair of IEEE YCon ECE 2019, 18, 16, and Co Chair of IEEE RTN HTC 2017 and IEEE YCon ECE 2017, Founder and PC Chair of IEEE YCon ECE 2015. IEEE Basic on 2019 and RIACON 2019. She has served as an educational board member of IET Signal Processing from 2018 to date and 2018 20 member technical committee image, video, and multimedia, Asia Pacific Signal and Information Processing Association. I think there are lots of more things uh, to talk about her, but uh, this is a very brief introduction about her. Uh, so I think uh, we should now uh, hear about her research on 2D biosignal processing from her today. So I would like to invite Professor Celia Shanas to start her presentation. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Professor Mohibul, uh, for such a humble introduction. Thank you for, uh, thank you, Dr. Professor Anwar Hussain and Dr. Firuz Mitha for uh, initiating this session. It is a great honor to be here, actually. Uh, although Professor Mohibul has uh, read my bio, to me, it is not a bio. It's a, it's a, it's a series of inhuman hard work. Inhuman hard work, not only for myself, for every member of this country. You know, that's very important. So when I did all those things, and there, there, there was nobody in different fields, when I acquired those things, in, there was nobody in front of me. But at this moment, I can say the example has been created and every member of Bangladesh section has the capacity and way to do it, and it will be much easier now to do it. So this is a huge commitment, and this is a huge hard work, but the baseline of my every hard work was my research and innovation. If I could not do a good quality research, nobody would have listened to me. So this is a message to every young generation. Please concentrate in your research first, and if you can do well in your research, your other activities, your relevant activities, people will give you a priority and they will listen to you. And that's an important pillar of the leadership. So let me share my screen very quickly. Uh, and tell me uh, whether you are able to see my screen. Uh, give me a minute. Hope it is visible to all of you, right? Yes, yes, madam. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. You know, uh, it's important. So no matter where you are, whether you are in Bangladesh or you are in Botswana, you are, when you are doing a research, always try to do an international level research and try to relate yourself to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, world quality standards. So no matter what, 
you will be recognized. So this is to this topic is very important for us, and because uh, billions of people are suffering for of different diseases, so it's important uh, to help the doctors to do the automation in said such disease detection. And now you will do such automation. Actually, uh, there are emerging technologies going on starting from AI, machine learning, deep learning, and we will be focusing on the deep neural network to really inspire you to do research in that domain. And not only that, in my previous session of Women in Engineering session organized by Bangladesh section, I really told you that how important it is. And this is the brief bio what Prof. Mohibul has really um, took his time to read. But what's important, that every uh, member should connect him or herself with at least one technical society chapter of your interest. For students, I actually inspire those student run chapters where there is no fee because we have to really take the maximum benefit with minimum fee because we are in developing countries. So, so I was the founder of four technical society chapters in this uh, section, Signal Processing Society, for which the student membership is $1, and um, the Robotics and Automation Society chapter, Industrial Application Society. Industrial Application Society connects all the society chapters, all 39 technical society chapters of the Atropoli, and Society of Social Implications and Technology, because our country is connected to SDGs. This is a, one of the oldest society of Atropoli, and it's a great honor that Bangladesh have it. And if more members join to that society, that will very benefit and we can connect our research to the social implications. Say we can analyze what is the implications of AI in different healthcare technologies. I humbly request you to visit my Google Scholar citations. You know, sometimes, you know, in 2020, I was very worried that despite limitations of master's students, because we have scarcity of PhD students in Buet, where I'm serving, because majority of our students are going to United States, Canada, Australia for their higher study. And in 2020, in the lockdown, I was thinking that how I will continue my research in such a difficult condition. And I, after the end of 2020, I found that uh, due to my students' hard work, the citations have surplus 20, 2019. If you see the graph, and 2021, we are in the midway. Hope we can do better than 2020. So it's not only just giving the citation, it's giving, uh, telling our young generation that despite the limitations of the PhD student, master's students, research funding, computational facilities, what can be done? If you want to really involve yourself in research and collaborative research and find avenues and find topics that are impactful and publish in impactful journal and conferences so that it becomes useful to others. One of my papers was cited 345 times and that gives me still a courage that we are in the right direction. My students are in the right directions and that's the inspiration to all others. So I believe in power of networking and innovative ideas. I really do research to connect people to get the computational facility, to get the database, to get the funding, to get the fee of my papers. Because although I serve in the highest ranked engineering university in the country, but it's not always possible for our university suits our, to support our all research initiatives. It's not always practically possible. So I utilize IEEE to make connection to get those facilities. So young generation, please do this. IEEE is not just to take the leadership position. IEEE is really to make the connectivity to bring benefit to the community. And whenever I do any research, I try to connect it with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You know about 17 SDGs. Although my maternal grandfather was a lawyer in Kolkata and I'm highly privileged, but I never remember that whenever, I, whether I use deep learning or something or nothing, but I always have a paragraph in my paper about how my research is 
connecting to the community. One of the research that was cited 345 times with one dimensional biosignals, that is the electro ECG, electrocardiogram noise reductions, because if you want to really help the doctors to detect the ECG arrhythmia very quickly and accurately, you have to really reduce the noise of the ECG signals. And that's the work published in Biomedical Signal Processing and Control. And this is the work on dimensional signal, pitch estimation, fundamental frequency, using an autocorrelation model from the noisy environment has been published in IEEE transactions. And another you must have heard about hearing impaired people. And you need hearing impaired device, which are effective to reduce the noise. This is a speech enhancement based on statistical modeling that is also published in IEEE transactions. These are examples for the young students and young faculties that how you will choose your research topic and automatically will be going towards high quality papers. And recently this CSER, CSER activity detection from brain signal, this is another one dimensional signal has been published in biomedical signal processing and control by one of my master's students. She is an assistant professor of Asia Pacific University. And from the British era, from my, from my grandmother and grandparents, I was, I was listening about a lot of people that are suffering from tuberculosis because doctors are looking at the chest radiographs and, uh, and trying to diagnose whether the person has tuberculosis or not. While I was using the deep learning and those techniques, you see in the first row, we have utilized the decisions from the uh, from the de uh, ResNet, Inception VT, and uh, other architectures. And at the same time, we did not ignore the contributions of traditional machine learning techniques. And then we come up with the decisions to have a better accuracy. You know, this is an X-ray image, test X-ray radiogram. This is for tuberculosis detection. And you know what, what is the result? This has been published by IEEE Access by my undergraduate thesis students. This is example for Tabil and team that if you want to do this, you can do it. And if you need any help, please let me know. I'm there to collaborate with you. Also, we were doing the two-dimensional this uh, images for pneumonia detection because we really didn't know that COVID will come because pneumonia and COVID and those are related both the cases that season saturation level reduces and then COVID came it became a curse and I requested my research group to transform these cards into power of knowledge dissemination. I started collecting this X-ray images related to COVID and non-COVID and and applied all my developed new networks for COVID detection, a publication is underway. So this, anybody who are really collecting such data, let us collaborate and come up with the data so that we can apply our techniques and we can come up with very optimum architecture to really detect whether it is COVID or not. And that has made our work more interesting because my students then became interested about ultrasound images. It's very difficult to understand this ultrasound images, CT images, but they're very challenging. I love them. And recently, another paper is under review for detecting COVID from ultrasound images, but that has opened up three class problem because we were also handling the pneumonia when a test image come whether it is normal whether it is a pneumonia whether it is COVID and these three class problem detections made them more challenging now they are comparing the three imaging techniques x-ray ct and ultrasound to really suggest the doctors which imaging technique will be the best and accurate to detect COVID or COVID-related disease very quickly, very accurately with faster approach. And this is very important and most recent work, you know, IEEE Signal Processing Society has two flagship conference. One is 
I CASP, and another is ICIP. In ICIP 2020, they have launched a competition. My challenging students have started working on the competition and they were ranked fifth in the whole world. And that's a distortion classification laparoscopic videos using DISNET network. They actually found this DISNET network that is appropriate for finding the distortion in laparoscopic videos. Laparoscopic videos is a way of doing the surgery that's called laparoscopy, but there are a lot of distortion in those cases. And these are the examples of the content. This is an example of laparoscopic video image. And you know, what is the problem? You know, it's important that there are, we need to, no, uh, remove the fibroids, uterus, ovarian catalyst using different diagnosis and laparoscopic videos. But you know, there is a vision error happens when you are manually handling it. So any surgical error can from, is, is a very fatal. So it really demands a strong research. And we want to automate this process of distortion detection to help the diagnosis. Uh, we want signal processing based feature extraction. And for this, we really proposed a shallow network. This is not something that we have just utilized uh, convolutional neural network. My students have come up with this shallow network, they know better, and maximization of accuracy. And we want to minimize the time of detection. And this is the Disney World Network skeleton. You know, there are video frames. We have to uh, take the feature extraction block, then the neural network block, and then the classify what type of distortion it is. And this in the feature extraction block, when you are taking the input image, and there are a lot of distortion, like what Gaussian noise coefficient, we want to remove the smoke level, we want to remove uneven elimination, blur level, we want to estimate, and then we want to give you the extracted feature array. So these are actually just for your knowledge that what type of uh, distortion our laparoscopic videos are facing. Actually, there are white Gaussian noise, and I can show you some equations. And if you go to the papers, you can get the more equations for your knowledge. This is just in a lemon term how it looks like. And then the, there are smoke level detection. You know. Smoky frames, um, you know, tends to have less median value, and that will give you a clue that how you can detect the smoky smell and then take the mitigation plan to deblur them. You know, another important problem is an uneven illumination level. This is an equation that will actually, the ratio of luminance mean to range is a great indicator for these changes illumination. So you can see the uh, glimpse of pictures that where we are suffering from uneven illumination level. Then blur level estimation, that means the image is blur and you can really, uh, it depends on camera hardware issue, there may be slow uh, shutter, there may be a speed problem, long focal length and depth of the fill. So uh, a blur image will show low variance and less ages. So these are the observations that will help you to detect them. And also this is the shallow network my students have designed. They have actually doing permutation combinations of different networks. Then they found and the different due to different level of noise and due to handle of different uh, removal of different noise. These are the blocks really optimum. So they have designed this shallow neural network really. I thank my students to spend thousands of hours on these uh, video images and to come up with this LSTM dense layer, batch normalization, then again a dense layer to reach the decision. There are convolutional layer also, and there is also attention. They have also given some attention sequence to really guide the LSTM. This is very important because attention-based neural network has been become very popular in detecting this. So when you are handling biomedical data, people will always ask you, what are the valid, from where you got the valid data? You know, this is the data set, 800 videos launched in the competition website for the first time in October, 2020. 
and there are 10 classes of different noises four individual classes the six classes are combination of individual classes that's a challenging problem it's not a two plus problem it's a four class individual and six are combination of the four ultimately there are 10 class and we are targeting to detect a 10 class problem that's a pretty challenging problem and every class has 80 videos it means that data is very very big it's not a but still the data is not so big that's why we have designed a shallow network otherwise we could go for a very deeper network if data were more so these are the data distribution that uh, how the data are distributed this is very important to really understand that there is no data imbalance this is very important if there were data imbalance that would have been another problem i would tell you in my next research that how we can handle the data imbalance you know also you need data people data preparation or pre-processing you know and there are a lot of methods and uh, we have used such methods to whiten the histogram and uh, this is our learning crafts between our training and validations and we can see that the uh, accuracy for our training and validation almost um, uh, almost following each other which is very important there is no such difference and also uh, People may ask you when you are giving a model, why you have chosen this model? Is this model random for you? No, we have given them a response by uh, presenting our accuracy at the same time presenting our loss. That how lossy the model is. We can see the model is not so lossy in every iteration. So if we increase the iteration, the loss decreases but accuracy increases that indicates that our model is so appropriate and accurate for this particular problem uh, this is a, a model performance uh, accuracy loss and another uh, another statistical score that is called cohen kappa score just for your knowledge that how appropriate is your model is <coughs> you see for both the training and validation, our Cohen Kappa score is running good. But that is the stable as for a seen data. We have also evaluated our performance in the competition using the unseen data, and accuracy is 78.84%. For the known data, it was 85. And for the unseen data it's still close to 80 it's a very good performance i should say compared to the seen data and unseen data and the cohen kappa statistical score has not decreased so much from 88 percent or 86 percent to 81 percent and this slide actually represent how our model is able to handle the unseen data, which we have not been tested before. And this is the comparison, you know, these are the methods given in the competition website and YOLO one is ours one. And we are doing pretty good in accuracy. And not only that, we are computationally very efficient compared to the other methods that actually uh, that uh, that makes our uh, method more potential candidate to implement in real time because it takes only simple seven milliseconds another two-dimensional signal is musculoskeletal radiographs previous research we have handled a two-dimensional signal that is a laparoscopic video and identified the distortion and it is so recent and this is also musculoskeletal radio club so when we started this problem first question my student asked me why you have started this musculoskeletal there are a lot of images like that why you are giving such a difficult image to us you know i started that 1.7 billion people are suffering from musculoskeletal abnormalities i told you that i always try to connect my research that will create impact to the community billions of people that means 
problem is suffering by 1.7 billion people. If you can give some solution, it can create impact on more people. So that's the guideline from the young generation. But there are limitations of conventional neural networks because there is a poor translational invariance and lack of uh, information about the orientation. So we wanted to overcome it. And also it needs huge data set for training. And my previous um, uh, problem, I showed that getting a huge data set is always a challenging one. So we really don't want a method uh, which really need huge data set for training. We want to avoid that. And how CAPSNET overcomes this problem? The CAPSNET actually output from each neuron is replaced by a vector and max pulling operation is replaced by more effective routing by agreement algorithm. These are my, my students have really found this out. And this is an overall structure of this capsule network. If we uh, had to handle this structure, we need some pre-processing because you, our data are really of different sizes. But for choosing the data, I was guided my students, you know, don't just depend on the visual observation. There are 64 cross 64, 128 cross 128, and 2 to 4 cross 2 to 4 images. And if you look at them visually, you can see that 2 to 4 and 2 to 4 pixel resolution is high and it's better. So we cannot down sample uh, signals. So what we did, we depend on some objective measures. The first object measure was training accuracy and validation accuracy. You can see for two to four across two to four, both the training and validation accuracy are higher. And not only that, we have also evaluated the blind image spatial quality evaluator and naturalness image evaluator, eval, uh, naturalness image quality evaluator. And if the errors of such brisk and nick are less, that's a better. So we can see that two to four plus two to four are providing you less score. That means more features are preserved and we don't lose more features after resizing. That's a suggestion for the young generation. Don't just empirically choose the data, just don't just choose any parameter empirically, just give a justification subjective evaluation and objective evaluation. Both are very important to convince people. This is the proposed structure of the caps net. If you look at this, you will be a little bit clear. I'm explaining a lemon term that you are taking the preprocess image, you are going to the network, then the capsule network, then routing algorithm, then there are two class, normal or abnormal, and you can see the sizes, how it is varies. Now, where is the data? This is the data uh, from mirror data set, and that's a big data. 14,656 images, 8,941 images are normal, 5,715 images are abnormal. But you see, the data have, is not imbalanced. And that's a good thing for us. I'm coming, I'm going towards data imbalance. And why we have applied this routing number? If you look at the x axis, there's a routing number, y axis is training and validation accuracy. In both the cases, we found that if we increase the routing number, the validation and training accuracy increases. But we have tried with wall type of image like finger, elbow, hand, uh, like humerus, forearm, shoulder, and wrist. But in case of some images, E and F, I'm sorry if it is poorly visible, <clears throat> last but second row. So you can see there is some overfitting problem happens if we increase the routing number. And if we found that if we increase it more than four, overfitting happens. So to avoid overfitting, we have rationalized that we must go for four routing by agreement algorithm. This is for the young generation. So. So whenever you give some justification, some comment, give plot, find parameters so that the reviewers become really convinced that why you are doing it. Now, 
I started Capsule Network. You may tell why Capsule Network. Then I already told the a justification is needed. And for justification, that kappa, Cohen kappa static score is given. If you look at the left table, it is only 70.5% for conventional dance line. But if you look at our capsule network, it is 80.115% is a huge achievement. And now if you look at these data, this table, that means the proposed capsulet architecture given by blue for different images in the x-axis and kappa score in the y-axis, that means our architecture provides 10% better kappa score with 50% less training data, I told you. We want to develop a method that needs less training data because it's not always possible for you to find the training data for biomedical signals, okay? Now, people will ask you, what is your performance? How we were doing? And our performance parameter is uh, training and testing accuracy and, and to whom you are, you are actually comparing. We have compared with the standard technique. This is the result here, and this is the result in our case. Both training and testing accuracy for our case is higher than the conventional one. This is for the new generation. And again, the last question by the viewer, how accurate your model is. Again, we have, plotted loss accuracy curve. The red one is the accuracy for capsulin. Black one is the loss for capsulin. Blue one is the accuracy for densely. And the purple one is the loss of capsulin. You can see our model provides more accuracy with low loss. That's the contribution. And you know the outcome, it is the undergraduate thesis work. It has been published in IEEE Access. So please try it, read the paper. And if you are interested with any other signal, please come back to me. Let us do the collaboration so that we can apply this capsule network for any other signals which you are handling. Now, since you know I'm an advocate of women empowerment, through achievement, not by quota. And I visited, uh, the, since Bangladesh has 55 IEEE student branches, I had the opportunity to visit majority of the student branches and many of them. And in, 20, in 2000, before 2014, it was nine student branches. Now it is 55 student branches. And they were formed because we visited those university first, inspired them, and many of them were formed. And while visiting uh, these rural areas, and also in India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Indonesia, I have seen our women are suffering from skin disease, but they're shy. This is a digital image of skin diseases, skin cancers, how to help our women for our, through our research. And since it is a, it, these are digital images and there are remarkable areas of skin diseases, you can really identify those region of interest by applying deep learning. But again, the data, we started collecting data from different medical colleges. This lockdown has started, but at the same time, we started with the 10,000 HAM data set. But now you see the problem. It's not a two-class problem. It's not a four-class problem. It's a seven-class problem. Not only that, you see the data distribution. Some data are very high, and some data are very low in number. If a test image comes from vascular lazo, which is only 142 images, then it has a tendency to be detected as a melanoma because it has a high number of templates. So this is the problem and this is the challenge. That's why, so I'm going from low challenge to high challenge in terms of data. And that's why there are 
data augmentation. There are a lot of data augmentation techniques. Change the orientation, do the flip flop, uh, do the rotator, do the random distribution, change the skewness. So data augmentation we have applied to handle this data imbalance. And there are a lot of fine tuning strategies also depending on the database size. Uh, I divided it in four quadrant. If your data set is large and similar to the pretend model, and uh, then uh, you can uh, you can you can train some layers and leave others frozen. And if your data set is large but different from the pretend models data set, then you can train the entire model. So we have applied this fine tuning strategies and applied this Inception V3, VGG16, VGG19, ResNet50. Also, we did not leave any scope of investigating the conventional image-based features because not all features were implemented for skin cancer diagnosis. This is just a typical architecture of Inception V3. We use convolution layer, average pool layer, max pool layer, competition layer, dropout layer, fully connected layer, and softmax. But depending on your uh, data optimization, you can leave some, um, some blocks if you need. So these are top specification layer, and these are the conventional features. It's very important if you can take a knowledge from the conventional features. There are image quality feature, is a histogram analysis in the color plane, red, green, blue, hue, saturation like that, YCBCR. And this histogram analysis we really did to see how our method are working. So as expected, uh, conventional features compared to the conventional features, our models are working very good in terms of accuracy. That's the motivation that we are in the right direction and our work is in under publication and that has opened up a new opportunity for us. Rather than taking all the layers, we want to take the best layer from different architectures, do the fusion of layers and send it to the classifier to really do the prediction the way we handle the tuberculosis detection using just x-ray let me share this information to you since as professor Moivul has said i'm serving as a global uh, signal processing society women in signal processing for 10 ieee regions it's a great opportunity to be the first woman from the whole asia pacific to serve you so it's important for me to give the knowledge and to give the information to all of you so that you can be part of it. IEEE Signal Processing Cup 2020 is a competition happens every year with our flagship conference. And uh, in 2020, my team was ranked fourth. And another flagship conference is ICIP. I told you in ICIP 2020 in VIP, Video Image Processing Cup competition, my team was ranked fifth. So not important who, how you rank. It's important you see the topic. You see the database. You improve your skill. I learned a lot from these two topics and my journal publications are underway. Especially, I think those competitions will help my students to go to very good school for PhD study, because I give you one example. In 2015, from a speak up competition in Australia, my team was ranked fifth. They were very discouraged. And I told you, no matter what, we will publish journals from there. And we published three journal papers from there. And that has helped my students to get an admission in Princeton University. You know, the opportunity that I had did not get in my life, you know, and my students have got it. That's why we are doing IEEE and we are doing research here to bring benefits to around the community, to improve the community. And you know about IEEE 10 since 2020. This is the highest honor of IEEE Bangladesh section. We have owned it by filing the bid among 58 sections of Region 10. It's a huge hard work. And when it started in June, everything was canceled, postponed. As a general chair, I really inspired every volunteer to remain committed. Our 
volunteers have worked so hard and it was made free to every IEEE member of Asia Pacific region and almost everyone helped and we had more than 1800 participants what i am why i am telling because in this conference we had a lot of speakers related to ai machine learning biomedical signals a lot of papers and i think almost second highest number of papers in the area of biomedical signal processing machine learning and ai and it's a great honor that itp president toshio fukuda was the chief guest for the first time in history for IEEE Bangladesh section. Next time, when you will call IEEE President Toshio Fukuda, he will really respond. And he responded for our WET conference. That's the thing I want to tell to every member. Do something very important, very significant for your research so that it can facilitate the next generation and always it is important to create the path for others and also we did international covid 19 congress to really know how our machine learning researchers our industry experts our women engineers our young professionals are doing you know it's a, maybe this type of congress for the first time any section in the world did and we had more than 400 participants it was again made open to every member and again, for the second time in any section, ITPLE president came, and that's a huge honor for all of us. Please utilize this momentum. Don't start from the scratch. We will be broken into pieces if we start from the scratch. So these are some individual errors I, uh, I actually um, received, not only for my ITPLE activity, because my ITPLE activity is always driven by my research activity if you look at the activities always there are a lot of workshops a lot of conferences a lot of seminars so it's important and the women in engineering group for which i was the founder that became the best one in the whole asia pacific best one in the whole world also women in engineering student but for which i'm the founder at Buet is the best one in the region 10 and best in the whole world. What I'm telling, BUBT has a women in engineering student branch. If you want to become best, just let me know. I will share all the things to you so that you don't need to start from the scratch. Since it is already done, you have to do it in a more faster approach. Don't start from the scratch. As a first female chair of Articuli Bangladesh section in its 25 years history, I have received this banner of 25 years from MGA, and that has increased my commitment more. I lead my section for more than 130 events, even in the virtual world, and help my section to win the MGA Outstanding Large Section Award. That is the best award for any section can achieve, you know. The Indian sections, Kerala and Bangalore, has received in 2019 and 20. 2020. So please, please continue your research activity and, and keep the momentum. This is my appeal to all of you. And this is always a great thing to receive the best student uh, award, best women in engineering student branch award, best young professional group award. And our past chair, Professor Fatta, was the regent and outstanding volunteer. That's the only uh, best honor a person can. We waited 25 years, 26 years to produce one outstanding volunteer. Now we think we don't need to wait next 25 years. Maybe in next five years, we'll have another regent and outstanding volunteer. Thanks to our mentors who really made the path for our way. That's the generation benefit. And it is always a great honor to receive this for Bangladesh from IEEE president, uh, Jose Mura in 2019 future president Toshio Fukuda, and all regional directors, Akinuri, Kuzin, and Deepak Mathur. So let me conclude by saying that why you will do research. Don't do your research just alone. You can be a best researcher, but what else? You need to build your community. You are not doing IEEE just to take the position. This EMBS chapter was formed in 2015. 
And it was pretty dormant chapters. We really worked so hard, tried to collect every EMBS researcher, launch conference from EMBS. The society has launched its own conference. Society has done a lot of distinguished lecture and it has brought benefit to few members in Bangladesh we have in 27 or 28 members. And that we don't really need to 500 members for a society to create impact. We have only 27 members and we made sure that every EMBS researchers are connected and contribute. We want to listen to them. We want to make them reviewer. We want to, we want them to have uh, their paper, have their paper in our conferences. And because of this, in 2020, our IEEE EMBS, region, EMBS chapter has received regional outstanding chapter award. Only two chapter has received it. One is Latin America, one is Bangladesh. Can you imagine that how you can do it? You can do it. Just your good work, good research, good conferences, good seminars, good workshops. This is an example to raise the community. And we did not increase the visibility of the Bangladesh only. We increased the visibility of the whole Asia Pacific to the rest of the world. So this is important for us. So this is important for us. I request the student branch volunteers, the young faculties, please focus on contributions. You will be automatically chosen as a leader, which is very important. It's a failure. We are running out of, of our time. So I think, can we- We are at the end. One or two we questions. Are, I, am my, yes, I am at the end of the slide. So let us work hard. It's very important. It's not only the keynote, it's important that how, uh, how these keynotes are derived, how these researches are derived. It is important to disseminate this information to everyone. Thank you once again for inviting.